Hey guys. Um, okay, so in this in the previous session, we briefly discussed upon what the uh, DETH and slots and what the steakhouse was, but in this one, we'll go in a bit depth. Basically, what can be built with Steakhouse Academy? We mean to say what you can build on top of Steakhouse Protocol or the LST networks. Right. So, the as I said previously, Steakhouse Protocol allows you to route your 32 Ether via the Steakhouse uh, smart contracts to the Ethereum deposit contract. So, when a user comes in with the 32 Ethers, uh, we expect them to have a BLS public key for the validator and uh, an ECDSA address, which means a wallet, which they can connect on the execution layer. So Steakhouse protocol uh, takes care of both the execution as well as, well as the consensus layer because, uh, yeah, so on the consensus layer, you will be running your validators and we'll mint your derivatives on the execution layer so that you will be able to use those derivatives in the DeFi protocols and also here. Uh, so when a user comes in with 32 ethers they, uh, and they have the BLS public keys, the Steakhouse registry takes note of that. They basically know what the BLS public key is and what the ECDS address, what their wallet address is. So now that the protocol knows about uh, who is depositing those 32 ethers, uh, and after taking note of it, it directly provides. There's, uh, there's no uh, lag in between. Uh, we directly route those all of those 32 Ether to the deposit contract. Now it's it's time to sit around and relax until the Ethereum deposit contract, the uh, execution consensus layer, activates the validator. And once it's activated, you are ready to mint your derivatives. So these derivatives are basically for 32 Ethers that you deposited. You will get back your 24 D ETH and eight slot tokens. The both. Okay, yeah, so DETH has an accounting, to accounting token, which is known as SAVETH token. These exist inside the smart contract, so they basically calculate how much rewards you're getting and how much you'll be able to redeem them in the DETH tokens. Similarly, for the slot tokens, you've got your SETH as the accounting layer. So SETH uh, keeps uh, count of all the rewards that you're earning from the fees and MEF from the execution layer, and uh, that you'll get back. Okay, so 24 DETH is directly, uh, once, it's, uh, once you've minted your derivatives, you can uh, take back your 24 DETH, use it across various uh, DeFi protocols, uh, and the other eight slot tokens, four will be, four will be collateralized, and you'll get back uh, four slot tokens in, in terms of SETH. So for four slot tokens, they are equ equivalent to 12 SETH tokens, which again, as long as you are holding the ownership, as long as you are holding these slot tokens, uh, you are the owner of the owner of that validator. So you can just prove your ownership on this stakehouse protocol, and you can so join or create a stake uh, create a house. In this stakehouse, you are open. In this stakehouse, you are open to create your own houses, which means building your own community. You can ask other validators, other node operators to join your community. You can help each other. So when you are in a, uh, when you've created a house and it has multiple validators, then they all will be earning rewards together. And if, say, out of, if there's a house with 10 members and out of them, one of the uh, validator stops uh, work, stops for some reason, uh, maybe unfortunate or not, but they stop running. So you will be able to help them. And whatever slashing is uh, slashing they receive will be distributed across everyone. So it it won't affect you as much, but you'll be on the same time able to know that there's someone who is leaking or getting slashed. So you should go out and help him. You can top the, top up that knot so that it's back to its ideal health, and then you can keep your um, you, you can maintain your uh, house health. Knots. So in Steakhouse, uh, we call these active, actively running BLS public keys or the valid validators and, as nodes. And uh, these nodes, uh, these nodes, as I earlier mentioned, uh, will mint DETH and slot tokens. So, yeah. Hmm. Okay. So now talking about what balance reporting is. So you've got your consensus layer. You've got your execution layer. Fees and MEV come from the execution layer, whereas the attestation and proposal rewards come from the consensus layer. 
So we need to take a note of that. The execution layer doesn't know what's happening with the validator on the uh, consensus layer. So for this, uh, we've come up with this balanced reporting. Basically, uh, the state transition means that from the consensus layer or the beacon chain, as it was called. So you can fetch uh, the validator status, any of the validator status. Even I can, even I can fetch it for all of them. So I get say that I want to balance report a validator. What does that mean? Uh, so first, I'll go to the uh, consensus layer and ask what the status of a particular validator is. Once I get that status, I uh, I I go, I mean, I fetch the balance. Now there's self-propagate, which means I'm doing it by myself. And there's a entity called deposit router. So this, this does mo most of the verification mechanism. So deposit router uh, makes sure that what you are providing, the, the report that you're providing from the, sorry, the report that you're providing from the consensus layer is actually valid. So deposit router validates it. And once the validation is done, it is sent to the execution layer. That is the, our smart contracts that, that are on execution layer. So they'll be able to know that, yes, it was validated. And these stakehouse contracts are more like a shadow ledger, which means they'll keep a count of the balance of the validator, but not actively, because you'll have to continuously balance report. Not continuously, but say every once an hour, once an hour or once a day, whatever you feel like. So you'll balance report. Using this balance reporting mechanism, uh, the uh, balance will be fetched from the consensus layer and then updated on the stakehouse contracts. And that's why we call it shadow ledger. They, are, they keep the balance, but they are also passive. So yeah, after this, you will be able to mint your derivatives because as long as you keep on balance reporting, the stakehouse contracts know that, yes, you are, uh, yes, you are your validator has been, uh, has been active and then earning rewards or being slashed, whatever. So contracts, contracts take a note of that. OK. So now that we've touched, out, touched upon uh, what Stakehouse is, let's see how we can build on top of it. Uh, Stakehouse, as I said earlier, uh, needs 32 ethers for the validator. So we were discussing about LSDs few months back, and now we've worked upon it, basically. Uh, lowering the capital barrier for uh, for the users because no one has, I mean, most of us uh, don't have 32 ethers just laying around that we can invest in a validator. So how can you build on top of it? We've, the, these are links, these are links basically. So once you get these slides, you'll be able to look, look into it. So we've built Stakehouse Solidity API, which means you can, while you're writing smart contracts, you can uh, import these uh, Solidity APIs and then directly interact with the Stakehouse smart contracts. Apart from that, we, we also have SDKs. So you're working with your DAP or your uh, Node.js terminal, whatever. Uh, you can use Stakehouse SDK. Stakehouse SDK basically imports all these smart contracts directly. And it, in, it, inherit, it inherently uses ethers.js uh, library. So it will be good if you, if you use that as well. So Stakehouse SDK has all these smart contracts directly exposed to you in your package, and as well as some utility functions which will uh, come in handy. Then comes the LSD wizard SDK. So I'll be discussing next what these LSDs are. And basically, the wizard SDK takes care of all, the, all those things. And if you directly want what the ABIs of our smart contracts are, you can uh, directly use the LSD protocol ABIs or the Stakehouse protocol ABIs. Since, since we are discussing what we can build on top of Stakehouse, uh, let's share some ideas. So restaking collective of validators. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, the Stakehouse contracts take note of what, uh, what the validator balance is and how much it is getting slashed. So even the slashed, to, uh, slashed balance will also appear on the Stakehouse contracts. So once uh, so we will, uh, we will have an active information about how a validator is performing. So let's, let's think of a scenario where uh, we've got a bunch of validators and we have all the reports on our stakehouse contracts. So we know how healthy they are. I mean, how well they are performing or how poorly they are performing or getting slashed or not. So once I have this report, then what can I do? So say that. Uh, validate, validators are asked to stake four ETH as a collateral, which I earlier said 
for, they account for the four slot tokens, four collateralized slot tokens. So we will ask validators to put up at least four ethers so that uh, we can go through this. And, and then uh, the on-chain oracle basically means that the stakehouse contracts already know everything about it, what your validator is, how long it has been performing, how well it has been performing. So you can get all of this data di directly from the stakehouse contracts. And uh, now that you, ha you have a pretty much idea about how good a validator is, you can say that uh, one of the validators was active for a year, and then you liked its progress, how it has been working. So you want, to, you want that validator or that node operator to work for you as well. So uh, let's, let's think of a scenario where I build up my own LSD networks. I've got enough ETH sitting in the pools, but I don't have enough uh, node operators to, that, that can utilize this capital. So I will go ahead, look into all these uh, database of validators, how healthy they are and all, and then I pick one of them. And since I already have these reports of these validators or the node operators, I can hire one of them and ask them to run validators for my own LSD networks. So that, uh, this is the idea. And uh, from these slot tokens, so slot tokens basically define every BLS public key or every validator. So with these slot tokens, you will be able to compare uh, what, how well it performed in the, in the previous, uh, previous, I should say, uh, validator and how well it is performing after you hired it. So you will be able to compare the two and make sure that it is performing well and uh, you can proceed with it. So we've got this reported and unreported slashings. Since I already uh, talked about the stakehouse contracts being shadow ledger, so they, which means they know the balance of the validator, but they are passive, so you need to update them regularly. This is why they, they are called, uh, they know the reported slashing. But in case of our stakehouse monitoring, so we monitor each of the validators as well. So not only validators, but also uh, what a user has staked for each of the validator, what, uh, what proportions of each they have put in. So the uh, monitoring, will know will give uh, will get the live data so that is why you can compare the two uh, from the stakehouse registry you get to know the reported slashing and from the monitoring you get to get to know unreported slashing which means if there's a validator which say at t minus 1 hour uh, it was performing well so and it had balanced reports so the stakehouse contracts already knew that it was performing well but now you come to stakehouse registry at t minus 0 that is present and uh, see that oh, it started leaking. So now there's an imbalance, there's an, uh, the both are unequal. Uh, so what you can do is, from this monitoring, you can know that yes, this validator has been leaking. So in order to keep it in check, you can go to the stakehouse smart contracts, uh, do a balance report and slash that validator. Slashing basically means that you're uh, telling the contracts that this uh, validator has not been performing well. So you tell them that it needs to be slashed. So some of its balance, uh, balance will be slashed. This slashing is particular to stakehouse slashing and is different from uh, the consensus layer slashing, so don't uh, mix them two. Basically, stakehouse slashing means that you know that a validator is leaking and you need to keep it in check, hence you will uh, decrease some of, it, some of its ETH by balance reporting. Right. So this is a screenshot from our monitoring where you can see uh, for a one week how a validator performed from the graphs and all. And towards the right, you can see the validator status being green, which means, yes, it has been active. And available top-ups means 0 0.002, which means it's leaking a bit. You can top it up. Once you top up that particular knot, you will hold a portion of that uh, validator. So this means that you're not doing it in vain. Once you top, uh, top up any of the validators, you can do it for anyone, not just for your own. Uh, so once you do it, you'll hold a portion, uh, a, fr a fractional ownership of that validator, and once it is performing, you again start earning rewards because you topped it up. Right. Since, since we discussed about what this, uh, how monitoring works, how, our, uh, how we're keeping in check how healthy a validator is, let's also discuss a new, new theory that we come up with. So we might build it up in a few months or feel free to build it up by yourself. So this is called zero ETH club, which means basically allowing, uh, allowing a validator to run uh, 
to be a part of LSD and with zero ETH, you can basically, you, a validator won't need any bond. So how would this work? Uh, there's a, there are some uh, clause to this basically. First, not everyone is allowed to this. Zero ETH club is more like a premium one. So we'll say, uh, let's say a validator is uh, already a part of an LSD network. So it is already performing. It had initially put up four ETH and it is doing its duty. So let's take example of DAP node here. So DAP node uh, runs a lot of nodes. Say DAP node comes to LSD, creates their own LSD network. And then uh, they also do gatekeeping, basically uh, only allowing selected validators to be a part of them, uh, selected node operators to run the uh, validators for them. So we, we can rely on them. Basically, uh, to be a whitelisted LSD network, you come up to the BlockSwap DAO and apply for uh, getting whitelisted. Once it's whitelisted, we'll check the, I mean, we'll get to know whether it's credible or not. Since it's credible, so uh, those node, op node operators that are a part of this uh, DAP node LSD will be eligible uh, to become a part of Zero ETH Club. So now that the node operator is uh, eligible, we will, it, it, it will be able to propose a BLS public key to a giant node operator pool. This pool means anyone can put any amount of ETH, I mean a minimum 0 0.01, let's say. And with this ETH, it will all be sitting around in the pool waiting for uh, waiting for a node operator to propose a BLS public key. So say uh, an eligible one, obviously. I'm not saying that any of the node operators, but one who are already a part of Zero ETH Club. So they come up and they propose a BLS public key. And with this BLS public key, uh, now these ETH deposits that are being made to the pool will be uh, put together as if four ETH and then uh, they'll be allowed to, uh, I mean this node operator who proposed this BLS public key will get to uh, get to stake the four ETH on behalf of all these uh, users who deposited, send it to the LSD networks. So in this way, say that our uh, pools in the LSD networks have ETH sitting already, say 28 ethers, four is needed from a node operator. So here, the node operator doesn't provide his own ETH, rather he, he just is there to run the uh, validator. So he'll he'll get all the ETH from the users that have deposited and then send it to the LSV networks and state, uh, it, gets to the, it gets staked and all. So obviously node operator won't do it for free. It, it was able to enter the uh, zero ETH club and then deposit uh, without, I mean, he didn't make deposit of its own. So, but he will ask for some commission, say, say because it is performing his duties and he hasn't put any of his ethers of his own, own so that means he doesn't get slot tokens. Slot tokens be, uh, belong to all these people who, all these users who deposited into the, uh, into the node runners pool. So this means uh, he will ask for some commission from the pool and that's okay. Uh, he's running a, a validator for you after all and without asking for anything. So, but there then comes that what about the collaterals? Initially, we had four, uh, four, ETH, four slot tokens, which acted, uh, acted as collaterals. So we were able to keep the uh, node operator in check whether it's performing well or not. But in this case, there is the node operator doesn't provide any, any ETH. So how do you keep it in check? So basically, since, uh, since the ETH has already been staked and he's performing, say that you notice that the, uh, the node operator it isn't performing as it is supposed to. Uh, so what we what we can do is blacklist that uh, blacklist that uh, node operator so what that means is either you can rotate either you can uh, rotate that bls public key to a new node operator which means you can appoint a new node operator to, to run that particular validator or uh, what you can do is basically blacklist them and since it was not performing so it will be blacklisted from all of the lsd networks so it won't be able to uh, become a node operator in any of them so this was the this is the idea about zero ETH club. Okay, so let's discuss. Uh, let's do a little deep dive into LSTs. We talked about Stakehouse and we talked about uh, all these validators and pools. So yeah, so there can be multi as Vincent earlier uh, mentioned that there can be thousands, ten thousands of LSD networks. 
So, but how does that work? Uh, right. So these uh, these LSDs are an individual uh, entity, and a collection of them makes an LSD network. So for for a single LSD, they'll have uh, they'll have three main pools: the fees and MEF pool, the node operator. I mean, you can call it as a pool. So again, there's an idea that you can create a node operator pool on top of it. As of now, we don't have it, but you can you can create one. So where everyone puts the puts their ETH, uh, put their four ethers together, and then uh, stake a validator. So, so first pool being uh, this here, uh, you can see towards the right is the Savi vault, which means the protected deposits. So for every LSD, they will have their own protected uh, staking pool. They they have their own fees and MEF pool, and they have their own liquid staking manager. So these are, un uh, these are unique to each of the LSDs. And collectively, when all these LSDs come together, uh, you will be able to distinguish them on the basis of the liquid staking manager. So liquid staking manager acts as a heart of the LSD. It basically will, will see that you've got each sitting in your fees and my pool. You've got each sitting in your protected staking pool. And there's a node operator already ready, which can run which can take these 32 ETH and run a validator for you. So the liquid staking manager takes note of this. It combines, it, it fetches all those ETH from all the required places uh, when, it is, uh, when it is ready to be staked. So 32 Ether comes in. So we discussed about the idea of smart wallets. I'll discuss it in a bit. So every node operator that comes to an LST will have their own smart wallet. So this smart wallet uh, gets all these 32 ethers deposited in it, and then it sends these 32 ethers to the stakehouse protocol, to the Ethereum deposit contract. All, all is done in a single transaction. So uh, you will be able to stake it. So now that we have a little idea about how an LSD works, let's, let's look into what, the, what these giant pools and LSD networks are. So say that there's 10,000 LSDs not all of them are going to have ETH every time. So there will be some sitting around in one LSD, there will be some sitting around in the other LSD. So these giant pools here, uh, similar to the ones we had in each of the LSD, we had the protected staking pool and the fees and MEF pool. We've got giant protected staking pool and giant fees and MEF pool. So these 10,000s of LSDs will, be, will have one giant SEVI pool. So these are unique. Uh, the giant protected staking pool and the giant fees and MEF pool are both unique. They, they are one. So they have the ability to provide ETH to each of the LSD, LSDs, so whichever needs it. So say that uh, you have some ETH, but you don't know where to put it. Where, I mean to say which validator, validator to put it. So you want some, uh, some safer rewards, so you put it in giant protected staking pool. And you also think like, yeah, I can take a risk. Then you also put it in giant fees and MEF pool. So they both collect ETH once they have collected and say that one of the LSDs there doesn't have enough ETH, but has a node operator ready who can stake. So a node operator is on the watch, looks into the giant pools, and says that, yeah, I've got four ETH. There's at least 24 sitting in the giant protected staking pool. There's at least four sitting in the giant fees and MEF pool. So if I, if I fetch those ETH into mine, into my own LSD, and then stake, then yeah, it will work for me. So that's what it does basically. It goes to the liquid staking manager, which asks the giant pool to provide these funds. Once these, sends, uh, once these funds are sent to the uh, liquid staking manager, then to the smart wallet, it's ready to stake. Right. Uh, let's also touch upon what syndicate is. Uh, Syndicate here, uh, basically it fetches all these EIP-1559 rewards, the fees and MEV rewards, and it, yeah. So it, it fetches all these rewards and distributes them 50, uh, half and half. Uh, half goes to the staking funds vault and the other half goes to the node operator. This is because in this stakehouse protocol, we had eight slots which, were, which accounted to the execution layer rewards. Four got collateralized, and these four were from the node operators. The other four came from the staking funds pool. So since there are eight slots, we also, and they were equally provided by each of the, uh, the node operator as well as the uh, staking funds pool. 
So we have to split them as well. So this syndicate keeps on getting all these uh, EIP 1559 rewards. Basically, it's always flowing in, right? Uh, because the validator is running and performing its duties, and execution layer is getting all those fees and MEV rewards. So it, it, there's a continuous flow into the syndicate, and it, it keeps on splitting them into half and providing them to their respective owners. So if you hold any of these LP tokens from the giant staking pool or the staking uh, pool itself, then you don't need to burn your tokens. Just by holding them, you keep getting your uh, rewards. Whereas in case of protected staking, since it is uh, slash proof, you basically will have to burn your LP tokens and redeem your deeds. Uh, so that means giving up your LP tokens. Um, right. Uh, let's also look into how these contracts look like. So in this LSD smart contracts, this, will, this is all MIT license, so you will be able to view them afterwards. Uh, we've got all sorts of contracts here, the giant LP, uh, giant fees and MEF pool, giant uh, Savit pool, liquid staking manager, that is the heart of the LSD. Then the LP tokens, how they work. Gatekeeper, obviously, uh, gatekeeping means uh, you allow only a certain or verified node operators to join your LSDs, and then comes the syndicates and all. So since we are talking about how to build on top of Stakehouse, let's see how LSD works uh, using the Stakehouse here. So I discussed about, about this uh, Stakehouse Solidity API, which basically is exposes all these contracts from the Stakehouse, both on Gurley as well as Mainnet. So using this API, you can create your own smart contract and build a, top, uh, build a logic on top of it. So this here, Liquid Staking Manager, uh, it inherits, uh, imports this, uh, you should be able to see Stakehouse API, using which it will be able to do its respective duties. So, OK. So first thing is, when a node, node operator comes in with the four ethers, it needs to register its BLS public key and say that it has four ethers. Not only say, but deposit those four ethers. So this function here, uh, register BLS public keys. So yeah, just to add, all of our uh, smart contracts in this LSD repo are basically uh, batch transactions as well. So which I mean to say is you can uh, deposit for a single BLS public key, you can deposit a uh, certain amount of ETH, but you can also do batch transactions on top of it. So uh, yeah, it's a feature, okay. So this function here, register BLS public keys, it takes in the BLS public key that needs to be registered, the BLS sign signature associated with it, and the EOI representative. EOI representative is basically the, uh, the smart, uh, not the smart wallet, sorry, the uh, wallet, the ECDSA address of the node runner. So this is how we keep in check that, yeah, that's the node runner and what the ECDSA address associa associa associated with it is. So the node operator comes in uh, and interacts with the liquid staking managers, register BLS public keys. Then it does a bunch of checks here. And then uh, you can see here, it checks whether the node operator already has a smart wallet or not. This is because Smart wallet is unique for every node operator in an LST network. So if there's one node operator, he'll have one smart wallet in a LST network. So, so if it already exists, then we do, I mean, we directly deposit those four ethers uh, into the smart wallet. If not, we create one for them. And uh, how does Solidity API come into action? So uh, here you can see, yeah, you can see. OK, so this get account manager is, uh, is making a call to the Solidity API and asking the stakehouse smart contracts to get the lifecycle status of a particular BLS public key. So every BLS public key has a lifecycle status. First comes in unbegun, which means the BLS public key is not known to the stakehouse contracts. Then z uh, zero was that. Then first is uh, registered, which means uh, the BLS public key is already uh, known to the uh, stakehouse contracts. Then comes whether it is staked, then minted, and the last is raised quit. So we, we ask the BLS public keys to be not registered previously. They have to be a new one. Uh, and then uh, this, you can see here, uh, smart wallet. So basically, smart wallet 
uh, executes this uh, transaction on uh, transaction router and it basically tells the transaction router uh, that is a contract in the stakehouse registry uh, which keeps note of all these validators. And it tells them that, hey, I'm trying to uh, introduce a new BLS public key to you and I'm providing four ethers here in the smart wallet. So in this way, uh, the LSD keeps note of uh, what BLS public key is being introduced to the contracts and that's how you interact with the uh, Solidity API. Next, after registering comes the staking. So we can see here uh, uh, the stake, stake function in the liquid staking manager. So the node operator was on a lookout of whether the giant pools have ETH or not. But if you want, uh, you can directly deposit ETH into the individual LST. But if, you, if it's already in the giant pool, then you can use that as well. So a node operator once sees that there's enough ETH, he can call the stake function here. It will basically do all these uh, initial checks, which are pretty much necessary. And then, and then here's, okay. So as I said earlier, when this stake function is called, uh, it first checks whether each of the pools have enough ETH or not. So it draws 24 ethers from the protected staking pool, four ethers from the fees and MEF pool, and the other four are already in the smart wallet which the node operator uh, created. So after it draws it, it again, uh, here you can see, it again makes a call to the transaction router and registers a validator. Registers a validator means sends away the 32 ETH to the Ethereum deposit contract and stakes it. Right. So similarly, I mean, these are all the contracts that, uh, that are on top of uh, Stakehouse in the LSD. So this will be available to you all, and you can have a look, at, look on it later. Okay. Resources. So we have already worked on some of the templates. So feel free to, I mean, those, uh, feel free to use them uh, or take inspirations from them. So you can... Uh, take those uh, contracts, contract templates from the repository. Uh, the rep repository link is already there. And then you can come to the uh, Stakehouse docs, read about all the Stakehouse, so lsd.joinstakehouse.com. You can come there, look at the docs, whatever, learn about Stakehouse registry, uh, learn about LSDs and all. So that will give you an idea. Uh, and also we use Subgraph for this. So uh, there's already a few tut tutorials on there on how to use uh, your subgraph and how to use each of the SDKs. Yep, so that was it, thank you. Any questions, feel free to ask.